Let's talk about Alabama, Georgia. Uh, the college football playoff national championship game is on Monday night. But, you know, this is the Friday show. We're going to go on and get the pick out a little bit early. Uh, give you an idea of which way we are leaning. Uh, obviously, I gave out a play on the Bet US show. It wasn't a side, but uh, but I did give out a play on that show. So go and check that out. Oh, I haven't done the uh, the recap yet. Let me go ahead and uh, and run that down. WinningCuresEverything.com is the website. Go and check it out wherever you know whatever mobile browser whatever thing you got. Go and check out the website. Also, subscribe to the podcast if you have not done so already. Apparently, now you can leave reviews on Spotify. I still have not checked that. I don't know. Uh, but go and leave a nice review on uh, whatever, five stars on Spotify and on Apple Podcast, if you would. The YouTube is still growing. Certainly help us out there. We appreciate all of you guys that are watching and listening, etc. over on YouTube. Um, and the show, of course, brought to you by BetUS, where the game begins. It's America's premier online sports book. they got a ton of bonuses going on this time of year, heading into the NFL playoffs, and, of course, the CFP national title game that is on Monday night. That takes us into that. All right, Alabama, an underdog by three points to Georgia. It's at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. Chris, um, Georgia lost by 17 the first go-round. The biggest difference right now is Alabama's got wide receiver John Mechie that is out for this game. He's out for you know the rest of the season after the SEC championship game. And possibly two offensive linemen, the right guard and the right tackle, Chris Owens and Emil Ikior, both of them went down in the uh, in the playoff game against Cincinnati. Now there is talk that they could be back in time for the ball game. Luckily, it was an extended uh, delay between the the Friday games and the Monday game, whatever. But uh, but yeah, Georgia favored by three. The total sits at fifty two on this. Go ahead and uh, give me your thoughts here. Man, I feel like it's a fool's errand betting against Alabama with Georgia. They just come up so small year in and year out, over and over and over again when, whenever Kirby just plays against Alabama, whenever this matchup happens. But I, I do think Georgia is the more athletic team. I think they're the more talented team from top to bottom. Um, and th- that's going to be in this game, of meaningful guys starting in this game. And so I will, like a fool, take Georgia. <laughs> So I also I, think anybody who's taking Georgia, you're an idiot. Like you're this is this is a fool's errand. No, it does make sense. Uh I'm gonna take Alabama, but I will tell you that I don't feel great about it. Uh and and obviously I'm gonna take them on the show because this is pick'em and why you know, why would I bet against my team when especially when I don't have money on it, right? Um I obviously what you said, Georgia just seems to play differently when they play against Alabama for some reason. Uh, and also, for for whatever reason, Alabama's offense seems to show up against Georgia. They've done it the last two times, 41-24, the exact same score in 2020 and 2021. Alabama has difference makers in their wide receiving unit and at tight end that Georgia can't seem to uh, they can't seem to stop. And on offense, we've talked about this a ton in in the past however many years. To win a championship, you almost have to have that NFL quarterback, and I don't know that Stetson Bennett is that guy, right? It, it's not like Georgia doesn't have weapons uh, because Brock Bowers is is maybe the best tight end in the country. He's only a freshman. He's got two more years down there. Um, they got George Pickens back. I think he's going to be close to 100% at this point. Uh, if not, it'll be 85, 90, somewhere around there. And, and they got other guys that are going to be able to do plenty if Bennett can get them the football. Uh, the problem is, if you go back and watch that SEC championship game, Alabama had disguised a ton of their defenses, and when they do a bunch of pre-snap stuff, Bennett can't get comfortable. And when he can't get comfortable, he throws the ball places he probably shouldn't be throwing them. He threw two picks. There were two others that were dropped, and there was another one that really, if the defender had been in the right place, could have been picked off. So that's five turnover-worthy plays. And and PFF does a, a tablature of this stuff. But he threw three interceptions against Alabama last year. Now, he played pretty well the rest of the year, but he threw three picks against Bama last year and had five turnover-worthy plays this year. You do that against Alabama, and it's not going to go well. So I don't know what has really changed. Josh Job isn't playing in this game, um, but I believe that Job 
he was hurt in that first one. So I, you know, I, I don't know what difference that would make. He he got beat on several routes. Um, Alabama secondary is not great, but they do have a lot of ball hawks, and that's where I think the difference will be is turnovers. So I I kind of expect Alabama to be able to pull this one out. Uh, I'm getting him a plus three. Uh, there's a lot of alternative lines, by the way. I don't know if you'd be interested in hearing some of those. You want me to read them out to you? No, I mean, yeah, it's fine. I don't care. <laughs> Alabama to cover by four and a half is plus 185. So, uh, Georgia to cover by seven and a half. Uh, sorry, no, no, no. Georgia to cover by ten and a half is plus 225. Georgia to cover by 13 and a half is plus 275 over at BetUS. So, a lot of different well, options. Those numbers are stupid. Like, those numbers are stupid. Like, if... If you're if you're Georgia, if you're betting Georgia and you're willing to lay more points than you have to, which is the two and a half was the last time I saw a number which would open that, like like then you're an idiot. Like if you're thinking that you're going to beat them by double digits, this is a team you've never beaten before ever. Like I, I just don't I don't know where you get that type of bravado. Like I don't have that kind of self esteem, man. Like that's ridiculous. <laughs> no, I can understand it. I can understand it. All right. Uh, so you like Georgia minus the three. I will take Bama plus the three. Um, obviously, I, I typically bet against my own team in these situations. But, uh, eh, you know, like why uh, why do it now? I'm, I'm not putting money I'll on it. I'll make a call on this. I bet this is a very low-rated championship. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yes, this will I mean, not I, be how I live view. in the S- I, I live balls deep in the SEC world, and and like I'm not excited to watch it. Yeah, I don't. I like, don't I know. Care less. The uh, I think the only thing that will save it is if it's really close late, right? If this is a close ball game late, uh, much the same way that the 2017 one was, but 2017 Alabama and Georgia had not met that year, so. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. Um, there's there's so many things that we could talk about with this game, but uh, we won't worry about that. We might we might discuss it on Monday morning show before the game and whatnot. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.